So how do we be united? Number one, trust. This is as much about who as it is about you. You're going to have to trust someone. So the question is who? Right? Well, God's standard and principle are a perfect straight edge that help make those calls for you. Some of us have trust bridges that should not exist and those have to be shut down. You got to get rid of the wolves in your life and demolish those things that those processes in that building that shouldn't exist that interferes with you getting connected to mentors, teachers, true disciple makers, Bible-based faith agreements. Proverbs 3 verse 5 that Pam just read said, trust in the Lord. Lord with all your heart. You cannot trust in the Lord with all your heart. You can't do that with a half a heart. You got to get some of your trust equity back. And I think when you when you trust the Lord and you stop trusting in yourself mm. or somebody that's real loud or whatever, and you, you get the wrong, you dissolve the wrong out of your life, you can trust the Lord. I remember a few months ago, I was just kind of fretting and you brought up the scripture to me where it says, don't fret trust in the Lord with all your heart and do good and and you know I think that that's what we need to do sometimes we're we're focusing and on everybody else what are they doing wrong and and what are they doing wrong let's look stop we need to stop that and look towards the Lord and and trust him and do good and when you are talking about those bridges sometimes we have trust bridges that are built to people that we should not trust they have they've broken those bridges and then when the good people come even when your your spouse or people that are precious in your life you're thinking I don't know how to communicate you with no them. No equity left. No equity. And you can't spend the same dollar twice. Yeah. And it takes time to build that trust bridge. Yeah, really but it's does. okay. It's a process, but yeah. it's okay. So Pam, what would number two be again of this process of being in united in faith? Repent. Very Repent. And you know, that takes humility. Yeah. Repenting is, is not a bad word. If I was hitting myself up on, you know, on a a wall all the time my head and you said honey if you would just move two inches to the left I would need to repent or I would still keep hitting my head on the wall and so repent is a good thing change your thinking see this is not a one-time thing we repent to be saved but you must also stay in a state as you were talking about Pam of humility to receive and grow how can you receive if you're not returning that's part of the meaning of repenting is to return to repent means to return to God, to his principles and his truth. A carpenter doesn't use his straight edge just once building a house. He does it over and over and over, and that's just in the first hour. So why do we think returning to God's principles is a one and done thing? If you're building a life that you want to last, a unified together life that can hold the power of blessing and the excellence, you need to use the tool of repentance every day. It's not just saying, well, I'm sorry every time you turn around. No, it's returning to the straight edge of God's truth for alignment, His perfection. Growth takes place in conjunction with elimination, pruning. You will always have even good things in life that need to be pruned. Did you know that tomorrow's repentance may prune away even today's blessings. Today's perfect timing can be tomorrow's disobedience. That's how dynamic your amazing life is. So you need the straight edge of, of God's principle and you need to employ the tool of repentance constantly. And number three, so remember, number one is trust. Number two, you got to repent and then you add that focus like um, Coach Herb did. You got to have that focus. Lock and load, I call this. This is for life so that you can live life strong. Focus is the elimination of options. You don't, you, do, look, you don't just try marriage for a day. You don't try having a baby for a week. Well, let's just have little Johnny for a week. We'll see how it works out. And if we don't like it, we'll, yeah, look, that's, you got to be committed. You don't try Jesus. Jesus saves you from death and hell. You don't just try him. You lock and load for eternity. Not to see if it coincides with your mood or opinion today. Well, it's kind of inconvenient being a child of God today. So we'll just kind of, you know, let that slide. Look, there's a focus. Your life responds to focus. That means you eliminate. You see here, this is dividing that thing from promote, that promotes unity, right? We talked about division being essential. 
This is focus. You've got to be able to eliminate those things that divide you from promoting unity. You eliminate. You separate yourself from anything and everything that interferes with your laser focus. Even the cultures of the world 